Joshua chapter number 1 and verse number 8. A verse I'm sure that is familiar to most everyone here tonight. Someday I might even memorize it. Joshua chapter number 1 and in verse number 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. The book of success this evening. How do you measure success? It's always an interesting question because the word success is actually a very subjective word when you come to think about it. There is not, there is not one measure for success in life. There are all different kinds of measures. For some, the measure of success is wealth. They've gained wealth. They've got money. Donald Trump is considered to be a very successful man. And he can hire high-priced lawyers to be able to defend him. Because he has wealth. Success could be measured by family. Having a good family, having a close family, having a family that, you know, stays out of jail, having a family that... Having a family that, you know, has bonded together. It's good to have family like that. It really is. It could be education. Education could be a measure of success. How many letters you have behind your name? I only have I only have an AA and a BS. And it took me as long to get those as it would for me to get a PhD. So <laughs> that's why I haven't gone back to school. One of the great reasons why. For some it's popularity, being an overnight sensation on social media. Deemed successful. For some it's power. To have power and obtain power. And to keep power. I've got power so I'm successful. And of course this list can go on and on and on. But as God spoke to Joshua here, here in, here in, in Joshua chapter number 1, a major change was taking place. In Joshua's life, and in the history of the nation of Israel. If you go back to verse number 1, as the Lord is talking here to Joshua, he says, it, it opens there, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' his minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. For more than 40 years, Moses had led the nation of Israel. And now he has passed off the scene. And a new leader is coming in. And you can think about all the anticipation for some the trepidation. The anxiety and the nervousness. What's going to happen? Is Joshua going to do as Moses did? The questions. And then, there, there, then there's the anxiety of Joshua. Am I going to do as good as Moses did? What's going to happen? Are the people going to respect me? Are the people going to follow me? A lot of questions, a lot of anxiety, a lot of change. 
God had chosen Joshua to succeed Moses as the leader of Israel. In verse number one, it says there that Joshua was Moses' minister. Basically, Joshua held the position of general of the armies of Israel. When Israel went into battle, it was Joshua who led them into battle. And that trained him very well for the next phase of the nation of Israel's life, conquering Israel. The promised land. Because that's where they were at. They were at the edge of the Jordan River, getting ready to cross over the Jordan River to take the land that God had promised them. Starting with the city of Jericho. Joshua was also Moses' right-hand man. And God was preparing had been preparing Joshua for a long time. And now God was preparing and charging Joshua for the task that was set before him. God tells Joshua in several places here in chapter number 1 to be strong and very courageous. Be strong and of a good courage. Because one thing I know about leadership is that leadership has to be strong and leadership has to be courageous. I long for the days we had that in America. Maybe next time. My political commentary for the day. And how would Joshua be able to do this and to lead this people? God gave Joshua the key to success there in verse number 8. And he gives us the key to success of the Christian life in Joshua 1 in verse 8. The key was the book of the law. Back in the days of Joshua, that book of the law, which he probably had a physical copy of that he held in his hand, copied by Moses and handed it to Joshua before Moses died. That book that Joshua had, it contained the first five books of the Old Testament. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. And Deuteronomy. That's all the scripture the nation of Israel had in the days of Joshua. That was it. There was no more. We today are blessed to be able to have the whole counsel of God and the 66 wonderful books that God has given us in his word to us, the Holy Bible. We have the complete book. Joshua just had the first part. But it didn't excuse them and it doesn't excuse us from following the word that God has given us. Because it is the word of God that is the key to a successful and prosperous Christian life. Joshua was to conform his life to this book of the law. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and day. And night. He was to make the word of God, he was to make the law of God his rule of faith and practice. So should we. This book that God has given us is the owner's manual of the Christian life. All 66 books of the Bible. The owner's manual of the Christian life. You want to know how to live the Christian life? Live by the word of God. Unfortunately, in our society, many believers today don't do that. 
They either live by what they think is in the word of God. And one thing I know about thinking, it can be dangerous. At least in my life, it can be dangerous. Uh, (laughs) Because many believers today don't even pick up the word of God to be able to know what is in it. They don't read it, and they don't study it. As I mentioned, I try to set goals every year, and, and, and this year in my goal of Bible reading, I'm going to attempt to take a great step for me. The last few years I had had the goal of reading through the Old Testament once, which I don't think I ever did in those years that I did that. Uh, reading through Psalms three times in a year, reading through Proverbs 12 times in a year, and reading through the New Testament four times in a year. And I was successful pretty much in three out of four of those things. This year, I'm going to attempt to read the Bible through six times in the year. Once every two months, I'm going to try to read the entire Word of God. Say, preacher, you're crazy. Been accused of that before. Not ever proven, but I've been accused. I believe it will help me spiritually to be able to do that. I think it will help me have a greater appreciation for the Word of God. I think it will help me to be able to learn and study the Word of God better. I will know the Word of God more if I'm in the Word of God and reading the Word of God. So far, I am on track. It's day four. (laughs) And by the end of the night, I will have finished day four. See, if you're going to keep this kind of schedule, it's not the kind of schedule you want to get behind on. You want to be on the beam. And that's a discipline all its own. Because I know there are going to be days I'm going to get out of bed and I'm not going to want to read my Bible. Don't you have days like that? A lot of them are usually in the winter. (laughs) When I pray for pitchers and catchers reporting. Uh, But the word of God needs to be a great part of my life as a believer in Christ if I'm going to have the word of God be my rule of faith and practice. I've got to know what the Bible says so I can do what the Bible says. So should every believer. The Bible tells us in in 2 Timothy 3 and verse 16 that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Make sure I got the right place. Yeah, I think I got the right place. In 2 Peter chapter 1. Verse number 19. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 19. The Bible tells us there, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved, By the Holy Ghost. The Word of God, this Bible we have, is a God-inspired book. It's a God-breathed book. The author of this book is God. Using men to write, but the author is God. Therefore, it should be our rule of faith and practice. It was to be for Joshua. The word of God should be thought on, or it it should be our meditation, as it says there in our text. 
Thou shalt meditate therein day and night. In, in the book of Psalms, in, in Psalm 1 and verse 2, the blessed man that is described there in those verses, the Bible says there his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. He thinks on the word of God. And how important is that for us as believers in Christ? If we're thinking on the word of God, then the word of God will be readily in our mouth. Is that not what God told Joshua there in Joshua 1 and verse 8? The word of God will be readily in our mouth. It will also be in our actions. We'll be doing it. We'll be living it. If we're thinking on it. And meditating upon it. And if anyone would be able to be excused from this, it would be Joshua. He had a lot of responsibility. He had a nation to run. Like herding cats. And I think Israel was worse. Because <laughs> they were stubborn cats. He had the rule of the people. It was a 24-7 job. But God told Joshua to meditate on his word. And, ever, and, and whatever we go through in our day, our thoughts should be on the word of God. And in the word of God. Paul wrote to the church at Philippi in, in Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 8. Hopefully I, these are familiar verses to you as well. Or this verse is familiar to you as well. Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 8. We have here, if you will, a, thing, a, a, a list of things for us to be able to think upon. I would call it a filter to filter our thoughts through as we go through our day. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, the word of God is true. Whatsoever things are honest, the word of God is honest. Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. God's word holds all of these and is all of these. If we're thinking and meditating upon the word of God, then we use the word of God as a filter to filter our thoughts. So we filter out the bad and keep the good. And God's word helps us to do that. The book of the law was to be in Joshua's mouth. In all of his orders, in all of his judgments, in all that Joshua did, it was to be according to the word of God. And so it should be with us. The prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 8 and in verse number 20. The prophet Isaiah, chapter number 8, and verse number 20. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light or illumination in them. They are not illuminated by the word of God. We usually speak what we know, don't we? Sometimes we speak what we don't know, but we're easily found to be a fraud if we really don't know. We have to speak according to God's word, the law and the testimonies of God. 
Joshua had carried on the work of Moses, and he had to carry on the work of Moses. Joshua had to make sure that the people were living according to the word of God and that he was living according to the word of God. He had to uphold the faith that, was, that, that had begun in the people. And we are to keep the word, the Lord, the word of the Lord that has been committed unto us. It's important for us to do. In 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 14. Second Timothy chapter one and verse fourteen. Here we go. That good thing which was committed unto thee by the Holy Ghost, which dwelleth in us. That good thing that was committed unto us, we are to keep. God's word has been committed unto us. We ought to keep it. That's what Paul told Timothy there, that good thing which was committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. God has given us his wonderful word. We are to keep this wonderful word. To live this wonderful word. And that's probably, to me, one of the most important directions that God gave to Joshua. The Lord told Joshua to observe, to do according to all this law. Not only are we to be hearers of the word of God, the Bible says in James chapter 1 and verse 22, we're to be doers of the word of God. Be doers of the word and not hearers only. Deceiving your own self. So many believers walk into churches on Sunday morning and they hear the word of God and they think they've done their good. Then they walk out and they do the same things that they did before they walked in. They hear the word of God. They don't do the word of God. The Bible says... As believers in Christ, we are not only to hear the word of God, because faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. According to Romans 10 and verse 17. But in James 1.22, it says, Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Not only are we to hear the word of God, we're to do the word of God. And Joshua had to do that. And even though Joshua was the leader of Israel, he wasn't, the law, he wasn't above the law of God. We live in a society of laws for thee, but not for me. Because, my friends, no one is above the law of the Lord. Every person is judged by the law of the Lord. There will be those that stand at that great white throne judgment that's described in Revelation chapter 20 verses 11 through 15 who neglected to trust Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And the Bible says ye must be born again. And they chose not to become born again. They'll stand before God Because of that. Many believers will stand before God and all they'll have left is the foundation of their faith. Because they didn't do the word of God except to be born again. And they are not above the law. Oh, this salvation thing, God's going to get me into heaven. He's going to let me come into heaven, even if I don't trust Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. No, there's no exceptions. 
If I don't live my life for the, word, for the Lord, I will get rewarded and I'll receive crowns. No, you won't. There's no exceptions. There was much that God told Joshua to do concerning the conquering of the land that he had to do in order to conquer the land. If he didn't, the land wouldn't be conquered. And after the inheritance was divided, the individual tribes of the nation of Israel did not defeat their enemies and drive them out of the land, as God told them to do. Therefore, these Canaanites and Hivites and Gergesites and all those ites were a thorn in the side of the nation of Israel. They were even fooled by one of their enemies to make an alliance with them. You read that later in the book of Joshua. So that they could not destroy their enemy, they had to put them under tribute. And why do you think the nation of Israel started to worship idols? Is it because they did not defeat their enemies as God told them to do? Would not that be one of the reasons why? I believe so. Joshua had to lead the people by example. And he had to make sure that the people were following the law. And he had to make sure that he was following the law. As a preacher, I have to make sure I practice what I preach. Because I will stand accountable before God one day. Not only to account for me, but to account for you. The Bible makes that clear. The shepherd is responsible for the flock and has to give an account to the flock. Now, I'm the under-shepherd of the Grace Baptist Church of Neotoshe, Kansas, and was the under-shepherd of the Welcome Baptist Church in Tucson, Arizona. And I will have to give an account. Not only of how I shepherded those, these two churches, but an account for the sheep. And how they responded to the shepherding. And for some that may not be a good thing. To be honest, it's not enough just to read the Word of God or study the Word of God or, or memorize the Word of God or meditate on the Word of God. Now, don't get me wrong. These are all good things. The Bible says we are to do these things. But it's not enough to do these things if we're not doing the word of God. If we're not performing the word of God. The word of God must be followed in every aspect of life. We are to follow the word of God. And we have to follow the parts we don't like. The things that speak against our desires and go against our flesh and blood. We have to follow those too. We need to follow the word of God and observe the checks of our conscience. The hints of God's providence, providence and the advantage of all the opportunities given by the Lord to us.
If the Lord gives us the opportunity to confess sin that we have in our heart, we've got to take advantage of it. Sooner rather than later. God gives us the opportunity to witness to people. We need to take advantage of it. Sooner rather than later. If God speaks to our conscience. Preachers preach something from the word of God. And God speaks to your heart about that. And you stand there in the invitation and do nothing. That's not good. Because we can ignore the Holy Spirit of God. We can grieve the Holy Spirit of God. We can quench the Holy Spirit of God. The Bible says this. And the thing that's not realized is that if we do that, the Holy Spirit of God will move along. The Holy Spirit of God won't speak as often or as much. We have to take advantage of when the Lord speaks to us. We must continue to follow the word of God in spite of our circumstances and our situation in life. What we go through in life. We are not to turn from the word of God to the right hand or to the left hand. We're to keep that word. We're to be strong and very courageous. That we may live by the word of God. There's so many distractions and discouragements in, our, in, in life from what we need to do that we need to resolve to live by the word of God. And if we live by the word of God, then we will have good success. We will be prosperous. Those who make God's word their rule of faith and practice and consistently and, and con conscientiously and consistently live by that rule, they will do well. They will have the best counsels by which to order their lives, the word of God. And they will receive the best blessings from God. God will give them the desires of their heart. Charles Spurgeon said, said this about this verse. He said, before the, Lord, before the Lord, obedience is prosperity, and transgression is the root of bitterness. In order to, pra in order to practical obedience, however, there must be a delight in the, law, in the Lord's law. Those who forget to meditate soon cease to obey. In fact, their heart has never been truly in accord with the divine statutes if they're not obeying the word of God. Align your heart to God's word, then you will be prosperous, and then you will have good success.